Xin Hui has a, oh, Xin Hui wrote this question beforehand. Uh. <laughs> I was like, wow, how did she write so long, so fast? Good morning, Shifu. Good morning, everyone. With regards to continuing helping others, I'd like to seek your advice on how to manage our thoughts on occasions where you felt that you have been taken advantage of after you provided help. Uh, this is a good question. Yes. Yesterday at work, I needed to attend to someone and have provided the required interventions. The person then requested for more to be done. When I explained to him that there's another person in the, in the queue waiting, he insisted in his request, stating that he, he has also waited for some time for his turn and that he wanted to make use of his leave. Fair enough. I acceded to his request. After that, he still asked for more and more. I can't help but felt that he gets what he wants at the expense of others. I'm also tempted to preempt the person who will be attending to this person next time. Sorry, I have to go. We'll catch up the lesson from YouTube. Mm. Bye, Sherry. Bye, Singhui. Yeah, you all said you have to go. Uh, not, not to not to chase your offer, but you all say you have to go. <laughs> uh, so, mm. so this is this is uh, this is true. Uh. yeah. So there are two things here. One is the feeling of being taken advantage of. Uh, the, the other thing is in the case that is described, uh, there seem to be, so I, I would presume that Xinhui is working in a, uh, some form of a service counter line where she needs to assist different people who is in a queue system. Uh, so When we say we help someone, uh, what does it mean? Uh, usually it means that you are not obliged to do that and you do it. Yeah. Uh, it, it can also simply mean that the person needs some assistance and you help that person. Yeah. So in that sense, everyone who is working is helping somebody. Right. Yeah. If you think about it, work is all about solving people's problems. Yeah, our whole world exists um, consisting of people helping each other. Yeah, you wake up, you want to um, go to work, you turn on the tap to wash up. Uh, your, you need to solve the problem of your cleanliness. Yeah, so somebody preempted you, somebody uh, long before you even thought you want to wash up. Yeah, already um, prepared a solution for you. Yeah, uh, prepared the water, prepared the piping, and so on, so that when you turn on the tap, yeah, there's water coming up. Somebody else preempted your need to, to, to wash up by preparing the soap yeah, at the supermarket. Yeah, so that if you want to solve it this way, you can buy the soap and so on. Yeah. And of course, they themselves cannot solve the problem directly. They, they also need other people to help them solve part of that problem. So we are all solve, we are all problem solver. Yeah, all put another way, we are all helping each other. Yeah. Uh, if we are able to um, encompass all the possible connection, you will see that it just take one person to to not do it, <laughs> and then there's a ripple effect. <laughs> You know, so um, the case of people taking advantage of us after you provided help. So she gave a very specific example of the taking advantage of. Um, there are other cases of, of how you may feel that you are being taken advantage of after you offer help. Huh? So, but for today's discussion, we'll focus on the, the case she provided. Because, for example, um, it may be that, <clears throat> uh, let's say also at work, 
you you your colleague asks you to help 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 out on something and then it turned out that after you help him or her uh she he or she actually leave work early and then you are stuck with the work <laughs> to do ot <laughs> you help the person no? so the person very thankful then the person can go off first right then you may feel like the person take, took advantage of you yeah, so that's another case yeah I'm, I'm giving that as an illustration that there are many different cases yeah beyond what i've said and what she has said um, where you can feel uh, taken advantage of um, and but i want to focus on the specific example that she has given in this case it is that uh, in chinese we say yeah uh, in english it would be that uh, you give a food the person asks for yeah yeah so that means the person asks for more and more and more uh, but in this case, in this case, because it's very specific to the person's job scope, yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> there's a bit of difference in how we should um, deal with it. So let's just look look through a bit more specifically. Yeah? So she need to attend to someone, provide the required uh, intervention. So then the person asks for more. Um, and then she explained that there's another person in the queue, but he insisted that he wants it to be done. Yeah. So uh, this is where um, it's, um, it's not wrong if we say, I'm sorry, but um, within the scope, I, I need to service the next person. Yeah. If you want, you can um, wait. I can give you priority after this person. Yeah. Because um, for example, uh, let me let me step out of this case to give you something more um, direct and tangible. Uh. For example, if your friend again we use money uh, because it's very tangible, very easy to understand. If your friend needs uh, fifty dollars, okay, and then you you actually um, lend him fifty dollars. Then after fifty dollars, the next day the friend come and asks you for fifty dollars again. So then it's up to you whether you want to lend, right? This, this can also be similar to how you feel like the person, eh? you borrow $50, then you haven't returned, you want to borrow another $50, right? But in this case, um, it is eating to the next person's time. So then it's no longer your own $50, okay? Then it is that you are, uh, to give an example, uh, the first $50 is from you. Then the subsequent fifty dollars, you you go and um, take from another person. <laughs> yeah, would that be correct? Yeah, not not so correct anymore, right? Yeah, and it's not so much that it's not correct for that person to ask. It's not so correct for us to to borrow people's other people's money to lend, right? Um. So I would say first and foremost, if there is a queue system, I'm, I'm making some assumptions uh, because she left the question and she had to go off the work. <laughs> yeah. So Singhui, if you are reading this um, and, and, uh, and my assumptions are off, then you may need to fill in the gaps, okay? Uh, so in, in such a case, if there's a queue system, let's say you are working as a teller yeah, uh, in the bank, or you're working as a service staff at any of those uh, uh, companies where there is a front line, okay? So there's, there are people in the queue. Let's say you are in a, in a telco, tong, one, two, four, eight, then you come over, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Um, and the person actually requested for a certain service, you solve it. Yeah, but, and, and if there's a stipulation that uh, each person can only solve one problem, and now the person asks for another thing to be solved. Okay, uh, it's fine to actually solve the second problem um, if it's not too massive. Yeah, uh, if not, you need to check with the next person in the queue. But nowadays, with with the queuing system, you actually don't know who is the next person because it's going by numbers. And usually, the teller don't know who is the next person. Uh, it, there's, there's a system where you say completed this task and then the system will just trigger and you know pop out the next person in the queue and flash on the screen 
So it's a bit tricky because in this case, you are eating into the next person's time. And mind you, it's not just the next person's time, it's everybody else that's behind the queue, <laughs> right? Uh, because it's no longer like in the past where you have, you have uh, multiple queues, right? Yeah, and you can literally see, okay, there's three more person. And then you ask the three person like, this Akong needs some help, uh, you all don't mind. Uh. Then everybody say, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> then okay, you continue. Uh. Yeah. But now it's usually a pool queue. So maybe there are 20 person out there and all 20 of them are somewhat affected by your, by this transaction. Yeah. The, the, I would say that the, the challenge here is in this kind of customer service situation, um, it's a bit of a predicament, isn't it? If you accede to him, you are actually holding up the queue. If you don't accede, the person can give you some, some nasty feedback. Uh. <laughs> yeah, because people always feel entitled, you know? Yeah, people always feel entitled. Mm. Uh, yeah, so Sinhui also highlighted, I can't help but felt that he gets what he wants at the expense of others. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's very true. Yeah. I'm also tempted to preempt the person who will be attending to this person next time. Yeah. Mm. Now, from this statement, then it seems like it's not the general public. Yeah, because it's a it's it's something that the person will repeatedly come back. So maybe this is not a Maybe this is not exactly a service line thing. I don't know. Mm. Um, so I, I can't go too much into detail of the specifics because while well, there's a lot of specifics given, but there's not enough context. So I can't really comment specifically. No? So I'm going to just wrap up um, by commenting generally. <clears throat> um, the, 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 and the thing is what I mentioned earlier, <laughs> Yeah. I learned this from, uh, from my Sisyong, one of the Sisyong who is a Taiwanese. Yeah, that Chinese very powerful one. Kang ta ren zi kai. <laughs> you know? So it means that you cannot offer other people's generosity. Yeah. You can offer your own generosity to others. You cannot offer other people's generosity. Yeah. You can, you can um, on the behalf of the requester, ask someone else whether they can help. But you cannot offer it first, then tell that person. Yeah. Oh, sometimes we out of our uh, helpfulness, we may end up doing that. So that's the one thing not to do. The other thing is, um, if you are duty bound, yeah. So this 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 is how I look at things. Uh. when it comes to specific duty duties, yeah. If you are duty bound, rule bound to serve in a certain manner. Um, your first priority is be professional, get it done. <laughs> now this may sound a bit, uh, I, I see value in corporate system. Yeah. And, and, and to me, um, it is, it, it is about, um, a minimum standard of service. <laughs> you cannot, that's the reason why those, those guidelines are there so that everybody get a fair share of service. Yeah. If everybody, I survey you, you survey me, then, you know, then, then no point for rules, right? The, the, the reason why things work is because everybody follows certain specific stipulation. Yeah. So if we can agree to that, ah, then we talk about survey. Hey, so just, I thought you were saying, don't, don't let, survey, need survey. That's a difference, you know. If you start off, ah, what you survey, then it means you are you are, you are foregoing all rules already. Whereas I'm not suggest I, I'm suggesting, I'm not suggesting not to be survey. I'm suggesting to have the, the, the rules, the principles, the manner of doing getting things done as a, as a basis first. Then with that in place, then you look at say, okay, within these boundaries. To what extent can I make adjustments? Uh, so let me give you one, one example that may illustrate what is the difference between um, having expectation of how things to be done versus being compassionate. Uh, some of you may have seen 
uh, the picture that I took the other day of a HDB block. Yeah, and I wrote, uh, uh, Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so after that, actually, uh, one or two students asked us about uh, about this. Like, what does it mean? <laughs> like, uh, uh, now some students may may not ask, but maybe they may not understand what I mean also. <laughs> yeah, because the the HDB block is part of the whole picture, so they may not know what I'm pointing to. If you look at the picture on Facebook. It's actually the numbering on the HDB block. The numbering, as I recall, is 220. Yeah. Uh, and me being, <laughs> some would say OCD or pedantic, uh, but the not pedantic, pedantic is about, about grammar. So uh, the, the second number two is a bit off center. <laughs> Most people are like, Sifu, it's your problem. <laughs> but let me let me explain to you my, my thought process. Okay. When I first saw that block, and the reason why I took that picture is my first thought is, huh, someone never do their work. <laughs> yeah. The first person that never do their work properly is the, the contractor that did the painting. Yeah. How do you get this wrong? The block is fixed, right? It's not as though you you don't don't know how big the block is, and you are just painting on the bricks, and then somehow the person who assembled it assembled it wrong. The the whole building is already built. This is a new painting. It, it's been there for thirty over years. <laughs> You're commissioned to do a repainting. How do you get this wrong? But in, in my mind, I was thinking like, the painter never do that job. Then second thought is, the person who is signing off on the project also never do the job. What's wrong in Singapore? <laughs> Like you have one job, QC the thing and make sure that it's correct. Not correct, don't sign off. Please redo it. But somehow that day when I was walking uh, back with another student, I, I suddenly think about it. I'm like, oh, but if the person insists that this is done wrongly, then the company have to probably the by then probably the gondola, everything is is taken out, no. Now the person must go and re 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 rent the gondola and then get the staff to no 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 and then you know re have re repainting it is not a trivial thing also. So I thought maybe the person uh, who is QCing it look at it and say, okay la, anyway the number is there. It's a bit off. Actually, it's quite off, <laughs> but still it serves its purpose. People can see it's two two zero. Okay, fine. You know, yeah. Make next time I have to QC more because if you look at all the blocks around, everything is centered, centered, centered. It's divided in three, three space, and everything is centered in that space. This one is <laughs> so two two zero. <laughs> and then, and then it struck me that, yeah, if you want to be compassionate to people's circumstances, then you cannot expect things to be perfect. You know. Yeah, and the reason why this, this came to me is because I oftentimes expect things to be perfect. <laughs> so that's why I always tell people I'm not compassionate. <laughs> I preempt people first. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But it's a fine line. Uh. It's a fine line. Yeah. To what extent can you be compassionate? To what extent can you expect things to be perfect? Yeah. I remember my teacher always say, This is the Yeah, that in samsara, in this saha world, yeah, if you expect perfection, everything to be complete, yeah, yuan man, that's very difficult. Have a, have a, Happy day of incompleteness. Yeah. How can you be happy when things are incomplete? If you can be happy even, even when things are incomplete, then you can be happy 
all the time. <laughs> Bye-bye.